It's three guys who combined to play 15 seasons in the National Football League trenches. Well, two guys. And Mackey, who didn't do sh**. He just, he just sits there and looks pretty. This is the O-Line Committee. Yeah, we're going to break down the greatest comeback in the history of the National Football League as orchestrated by Kirk Cousins himself. Week 15, 2022, Vikings Colts. This is the only show in America where a dumbass fan like myself gets to ask football questions and break down film with two former NFL offensive linemen, Jeremiah Searles and Alex Boone. Gentlemen, happy first, film review day. First question. Is it the greatest comeback or is it the greatest implosion in Ooh. the National Football League? Because I think there can be an argument for both. Wow. Wow. Just saying. I think there is. I think there's definitely an argument for not only was it the greatest comeback, but the greatest uh, meltdown implosion of a National Football League team that there ever was. Well, I feel like everyone's so sensitive. They're like, well, we got to just give someone praise. We don't want to bring anybody down. <laughs> I mean, your team's run by Jeff Saturday. They can't get any lower than that, guys. I'm going to be as honest as I can. I, I mean, am I, is that being rude? Is that being rude? I don't well, even give a this. shit. Are you- because we, because we, you and I on Purple Daily did. We obviously talked about this game from. Yeah, from, uh, we did. But, and you like leading up to the game the week before. You were like, "Are they really just gonna hire a guy?" I know he's like played football at a high level. Is he a Hall of Famer? I'm not sure, but but they're just gonna hire this guy. So, did you have that opinion of Jeff Saturday before he took the Colts coaching job, or are you just upset that they didn't hire an actual NFL coach? No, I'll tell you exactly why. I have a lot of respect for Jeff. Love the way he played the game. Thought he was great on TV. Clearly you have a lot of respect for Jeff. No, I do. But I don't respect <laughs> player the fact Jeff. that you... He has a lot of respect for player, player Jeff. Jeff. Player and Jeff. for media Jeff, right? Like, dude, you and those baby blues were doing it, man. You could sell anything. You were, Peyton was my quarterback. I was his guy. I'm cool with all that. The minute you jumped into media and head coaching role, like, and this is how I thought about it. Imagine being on that team, and that's one of your last years in the NFL. And you're like, hey, man, I'm putting it all my eggs into this basket. Team comes out of nowhere and like, hey, we hired uh, the local analyst to run you guys. Okay. <laughs> By the way, this guy was talking shit about the team we're about to play. So good luck. <laughs> have fun. Like, you would be livid. I spent hours and days and weeks and months to get ready for the season. And you just hired some Joe Blow off the street who has no idea what's going on right now. And people are like, well, he was involved in the organization. Yeah, there's steps you take. You go from like an assistant to an O-line coach, then to an OC. There's rules because you just things you don't know. What are you going to do as the head man when you've never even been on the lowest peg? What the hell are you going to tell me? Guys, I've been there. Dude, shut up. You don't even know the whole game plan. Shut up. You just got here. Seriously? This guy is leading me? I would have lost my goddamn mind. I would have. Bravo. Hey, I yeah. love it. Good soapbox. Great start. Great I'm just start being, on the soapbox. You, you act like you would have been like, oh, yay, Jeff Saturday. You would have been like, are they for real? Is This is the National Football League. We just hired a guy who has never coached before. Wow. To I mean, run a billion-dollar organization? Sure thing. To be fair, that wasn't exactly the most desired job in the National Football League at that time. That team was pretty much in shambles at that moment. Time out. How about this? Ready? Who's the DC here? You're their interim <laughs> coach. Good luck. It's that simple. You know how I know? I've been there several times. They literally just go, hands up. Who wants to take over? Nobody? All right, you will then. <laughs> Come here. <laughs> All of a sudden, it, well, that's what I'm saying. Why go out and make this huge spectacle? Oh, we brought him back. I don't know. Where is he one now? A- one, one answer. Where is he? Money. Butts in the seats. They want to put butts in the seats. They thought Jeff Saturday would and be, I'm not at least cool bring with that. something did in. He to sell, bring do we have I'm not cool with that Jeff too. Saturday sold tickets to Colts? Like, did, did Colts fans flock to the first couple games? I don't to watch know. I Jeff Saturday. Jeff just Saturday, Saturday call saying, time like, what are you doing? You're wasting somebody's career. Somebody that took a lot of time and a ton of effort and had to run a million gassers so you could hire some slappy off the street to run the show. Jeremiah, you act like I wouldn't have been like, here we go. It's about to go boom, boom time in Booney's world. Ready? One, two, explode. I want to know what was the feeling if you're Jeff Saturday and the Colts and Jim Irsay at halftime. Colts 33, Vikings nothing. It's a oh. road game for the Colts. And we'll get to the full. I have eight plays for you guys. We'll get to the film breakdown here. But the feeling of, wow, maybe I can do this. Maybe we did make the right hire. Hey. And then an hour and a half later, you're just looking around like, wait, what just happened? What's that, uh- I guarantee you. 
Go ahead, go ahead. What's that? All I can picture at halftime is that uh, that video of the old North Carolina Tar Heels coach walking into the locker room dancing. You know, oh, he's yeah. Like, yeah. He's like, hey. <laughs> like, you know, it's like, hey, this is easy, man. Anyone right? can do this. This ain't We that got hard. this. Who needs all those years of prep? What a bunch of idiots. <laughs> right, Jeff? Guarantee you, Irsay walked in like, dude, and everybody thought we messed up. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> what so an idiot. I- I have eight plays for you guys, and let's just let's just dive in because I know this is going to be. Hopefully, we can get to all this in uh, in a decent Probably amount not. of time here. But let's put the first. So the first, we're going to ignore everything that happened up until the thirty-three to nothing lead. So the Colts took a thirty-three nothing lead into halftime. The Vikings actually got the ball to start the third quarter, and I think they went three and out or just had kind of a weird disastrous drive. Colts get the ball back, and so now that this is the Vikings' second possession of the second half, they got booed off the field at halftime, even though they had you know ten wins or something going into this game. This is week fifteen. Rightfully so, you should have been thirty-three nothing at halftime. I'd have booed it myself. <laughs> it's rough. It's rough. And um, this is so. That, so, and I want your guys not only from like an X's and O's perspective, but just from a uh, what's going on in your head as you're getting your asses drubbed thirty-three to nothing. Oh. Vikings football, 33-yard line. I believe this is a second down play. It's the first haymaker that the Vikings punched back with to this point in the game. I can tell you exactly what they're thinking because when we played the Colts, do you remember that when we were here and they were up like 31 nothing at half? You're going in two minutes, and that's exactly what they come out with. Five wide, none in the backfield. Phenomenal play. The other, the other piece of this is like if you come from the Colts' perspective, like you know that the Vikings' offense is going to go into two minutes. Like, you just know, like, okay, they're going to go hurry up. They're going to go. They're going to spread things out. They're going to go. But then you have to make a decision on the defensive side. Like, do we, A, get aggressive, and do we try and come after Kirk Cousins? Or do we just sit here and prevent, and as my dad prefers, to prevent a win defense, yeah. and just kind of let them, like, they're in your mind, like, there's no way they score more than 33 and a half. No. Like, there's no you're, way, right? You're just like, okay, maybe defeated. they'll score 21. Maybe right. they'll get 17. But, like, you're just going to sit there and be like, okay, we'll give them the underneath. We'll give them the things we can. But – you know, what these guys did and what the Vikings started doing was just like, let's just press them vertical and deep and see who's going to be open, right? 18's going to get double coverage. Obviously, mm-hmm. they're going to cover Jefferson. But, I mean, K.J. Osborne stepped up big in this game. I believe Hawkinson was on the team. He stepped up big. Like, everyone took yeah. their turn in just finding ways to win. And, I mean, it, it's they showed why the Colts weren't a very good team last year. Like, so, do you guys feel like so uh, at halftime of this game, so someone asked Kevin O'Connell after the game, the Vikings head coach. Hey, what did you know? What did you say to the guys at halftime, right? And uh, and he said, actually, Patrick Peterson spoke at halftime, and he basically just said, if you guys can score five touchdowns on offense, we got them on defense. Just Which five guys. Home. We yeah, only need five, game, right? No problem. So, so what? <laughs> actually, if you you come out of the half, you walk into the half, you're down thirty three nothing. Whatever is said at halftime, you know. What are you actually thinking as a professional here? Are you th- are you coming yeah. onto the field in the second half thinking we can we can win this game? Are you thinking let's just run our offense? Like what no, what is your mindset? No. To be honest with you, and this was the mentality we had versus the Colts, and this is a real mentality. You go back and say this is two minute in my mind. We're, the rest of the game is two minute. There is no more huddles. We're going to be pass blocking the entire time. Everybody has to communicate. Everybody has to talk. At the same time, you have to expect them to bring everything to nothing. So your mind is constantly running. Like right here, this is simple for the O line up front. They're not really running much. You run a simple TT. Obviously, they're going to run the T right into the slide. That way, the center doesn't pick it up right away. They're going to try and pick his hip, and then they're going to bring I think that's Hankins right around right so you had DeForest Buckner going into our center he's trying to set Ed outside get Ed to move a little bit brings him in doesn't use his hands as much as we would like see how he kind of uses his face in there he kind of catches send him at Ed Ingram here is that what yeah right here see the one thing I always tell the boys in the gym is the only thing that can always defeat a twist is your punch because as long as you punch him he can't get the center right there see how he kind of gets the shoulder of the center now Ed does a good job, and DeForest kind of comes out of it. He does a little spin out of it. But if he would have punched him so much sooner and harder right there, this becomes so much easier for everybody. So you but, need this. You need a play like this for, for you to eventually have 36 or th- whatever it was. The final score was, I think, 39 to 36. You need this first haymaker, right? So they, well, this this play is is maybe one of the most important of the entire game here. Well, oh, absolutely. I mean, any, any rule of two minute, right? And usually two minutes at the end of the game or end of half, like the first rule is get the first first down. Right, just get the ball going, get into rhythm. Right, get the first first down, then get into the red area and score points like that. So that's what you have to have the entire time. So you have to just be like, okay, we need a chunk play. 
right? You need chunk plays. It's really easy. They're going to give you the underneath stuff, but you've got to get a chunk play to get going. So you get your first chunk play here. Now your offense is in rhythm. There's energy. And now the defense is starting to think a little bit like, okay, we can't let them get going. And they start to panic a little bit. Right. Right. And they, even if they give up one touchdown, they're okay. But once you start giving up multiple, that's when things start to go off the rails a little bit. So, yeah, you need your first haymaker, your first first down, your first big play. Once you get that, then the momentum then shifts back to the offense in the two minutes. And like situation. Jeremiah said, the, the energy. The minute you have a play like this that can take them for 40 yards, it the, brings the team up and it's simply like, all right, here we go. Now we're in rhythm. Now we feel ourselves. Now we got it. And I think the hardest part is a lot of the guys on the team probably don't buy it, but you're the one that's believing in it because you're down 33 points. And they're like, all right, dude, sure, we got one touchdown. Big deal. You're like, but we got to keep going. Like, that was simple. Let's make the next one even more simple. So that's another, you just kind of brought up the, like, to what extent do you believe? That's another thing I want from you guys here, which is, all right, now, so this is the next Vikings offensive drive. Okay, now you got to you gotta stop here, and you'll see situation on the screen. Now it's 4.53 left in the third quarter. So now we're actually winding down. It's almost the end of the third quarter. You're still down 36 to 7. You've got the ball at your own 25-yard line here. And I believe this is a first down play. Yeah. We're going to run it. So P and 10, baby. You probably don't feel like you're winning the game at this point, but you're looking for some sort of momentum. And that's kind of a lie because the whole time you're out there, you're not out there to get your ass kicked. So when you're out there, you're like, okay, we got ourselves in this situation. Now we need to get ourselves out of this situation. So you're kind of like, okay, now here's where the fight begins. And this is kind of the fun of the football, but this is, this is a good job here of running zone, inside zone. This is, they call this more of a mid zone. Take it back real quick. Brian. Brian O'Neill, my favorite. God, I love that guy. Yeah, does a great job on the defensive end. And then we have a nice little single here to 44. The other little thing B back side to 58. Love watch it. Watch how these D linemen are all pass rushing. Right? There are, none of these guys are reading around. They're penetrating, right? They're yeah. all going to be – if you go to the wide copy here again, Mackie, you go back to the top. Like, I want you to watch how all of them are like rush lanes, just get up the field. Right, so they're just rush lanes, get up the field. So they're all just penetrating, like they think, oh, this is gonna be a play action, this is gonna be a deep shot. So no one's really in run lanes, right? No one's anticipating a run here. And this is where Kevin O'Connell's like, okay, we're in two minute. They know they're gonna pass. We are under center. Let's just change it up a little bit, right? Keep them on their heels, even though we know we have to. Like both safeties are back off the ball. That one safety's twenty yards away, look, right? And so you're like, look okay, at the these defensive end. Gonna be, yeah, the defensive end's eight oh. yards up the field here, standing on, on the Brian O'Neill. Right, they're right all there? pass rushing, which is why this was a great change-up play here. And you're just saying, okay, let them pass rush. Let them get up the field. There's going to be creases available here. See how Jeremiah said he thought it was going to be play action? Watch this defensive end over Brian O'Neill. He The handoff happens, and he still continues to chase the quarterback because he's, like he said, everyone thinks there's no way they're going to run the ball here. And then right. they come he's out with a run. Yeah, he's anticipating play action pass rush here. And then you're going one-on-one Dalvin Cook with the safety because they do a nice job of blocking it up in a light box. You know right. what else would have been great here is a waggle. Yeah, mm. I mean, a play action here would have been great too, right? But now you're going here. I mean, you got to give K.J. Osborne credit for putting his head in here. 17 comes in here and cracks on the unblocked safety, which then now you're getting just the first chunk play, right? First yep. chunk play, get in rhythm, hurry up, get back on the ball. Now you've got them on their heels a little bit as well. So um, I've always – this is a dumb football question here. You mentioned, like, that the, that the edge rusher was going up the field thinking, like, why would they ever hand the ball off? When you're down by 30 points, I always find it funny as a fan when offenses, like it's the third quarter, fourth quarter, you're down by like three or four touchdowns and then you want to play action. I think that's kind of funny because why would you, what's the, why would you fake like you're handing off? But I guess the, in th this situation kind of proves me wrong in that this was the right play to call for a 20 yard chunk because it's like, it's almost like reverse football psychology, right? Why you would have, you be handing off when you're down by 30 points? Yes. And that's how you gain 20 yards. Correct. Yeah, you, you can't just – if you just – I mean, obviously you're going to pass a ton. But if you just line up and drop back every time, you're dead. You're just dead. As an O-lineman specifically, like, it's just impossible to do that over and over again. You have to change it up, whether it's a 10-yard run, a 20-yard run, or even just a 4-yard run. Like, you have to gain positive and make them think that there's still the possibility – that you're going to run the football at one point. You have to make them just respect it enough. Not in, you don't have to live in it. You can't live in it. But you just have to make them respect it enough that they can't just truly pin their ears back and go. And when they do, then you have to make them pay for it like the Vikings did there. And remember, every two minutes has a run game out of it too. Like you, have, you can call plays that are runs out of two minutes. So it's to yeah. keep everybody on their toes. So they scored a touchdown after the big chunk Dalvin Cook run there. So now they've thrown a couple haymakers. But, you know, the Colts are just kind of 
doing the math on the clock, right? So Colts then wind up giving the ball back. Now it's 36 to 14. Vikings driving inside the 10 yard line. Now we're into the fourth quarter. So under 13 to go. This is a third and two play. It is four down territory. But if you it's don't a four score, down game, dude, yeah. <laughs> you're going for it no matter what. If you're across the 50 and it's fourth and five or less. You're going for it. Yeah. You're down by 21. You're going for it. Let's I mean, go. Unless it's fourth and like 12 to end your season. And then you check it down for six yards. But eight. That's, it was that's wow. He checked it down for by. eight. He checked it down for eight. Oh, my bad. God, Jefferson puts this. Look at this. Blender. Over, Jefferson over puts Gilmore. This dude in absolute blender. Over I'm going to go back he, to the he, top he, here. He, he didn't know what to do here. Watch this route by 18. I mean, he comes in, puts his foot in the ground, just an absolute. I mean, this is this is this is one of the hardest routes. I mean, you're going one on one with the best receiver in the NFL. He fakes you out, he fakes you, and you're thinking this is an inside dig route the whole time, and he just completely puts him in. Great pass, good protection again, empty protection again. We talk about this a lot on the show. Quarterbacks like going empty. You know, no one in the backfield because it makes the defense have to spread out really hard for them to disguise what they're going to do. Right? This is just a four down rush. They're going to slide one way here, so they sorting over 44 to the right, and they're just going to send four here, but now 58's playing no man's land, and you immediately, Kirk Cousins knows for a fact that he's one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside because he knows Hawkinson has an in-breaking route here. 58's playing inside leverage. He's playing outside leverage, so they're going to blanket eight, uh, Hawkinson because, I mean, tight ends are always threats in the red zone. He's got three guys around him, and this is just an easy one-on-one -on -one pitch and catch on the outside. What's crazy is, though, I feel like even though Hawk runs here and 58 gets in his way, is that uh, Leonard? No, Leonard think, was hurt. He wasn't playing. Oh, that's right. I, I, I still think he could have got a touchdown here, too. Watch this. This linebacker kind of gets lulled to sleep here. Here, 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 there. He's still there. He could have hit there or there. DB over the top. But that's, yeah. But remember, there, I love, too, how it's just simple pass, bro, right? Like, just let's just get a simple pitch, catch, let 18 do all the magic. Let's get this the This is ball. when the Colts start to panic. When they yes. get to 21, when, when the Vikings get to 21, it is now full momentum switch. Everything's going right for the guys in purple. Now the buttholes start getting tight in the white, right? <laughs> Everyone is starting to sink up a little bit like, we can't really screw this up, can we? And there's a few like, no, we still have, we have room, right? There's no, no. There's 12 minutes left. We We're got Jeff Saturday. We We're got, good. We, we got the run game. We got a good old line, you know, but this is where everyone starts to pucker a little bit. This, and is, so, this is when things get tight. And you're right. And so the Colts, the, the, there's, so a lot of kind of crazy chaotic things happen where the Vikings actually a couple different times recovered and scooped fumbles that could have been touchdowns, but they got mm -hmm. blown dead early. Mm -hmm. We're not going to break those plays down. But so the Vikings wind up scoring another touchdown to make it 36 28. And now this is where like the rest of the fourth quarter and overtime, this is where the rest of the plays are. So fourth quarter, 231 left, fourth and one for the Colts on the edge of field goal range inside U.S. Bank Stadium. You got a few different options here. You're up by eight points, and they decide let's line it up. If we if we convert the quarterback sneak here with Matt Ryan, we win the game in this spot. I'll give it to you guys here now. <laughs> it's I'm the guessing. right call. It's the right call. I just I want to know: Did Jeff just go <laughs> nuts? Like <laughs> one yard? We couldn't get one yard. I mean. It's they're gonna go right after the right a gap, right? We talked there about it, it last week. It's wide open, right after the right a gap, but the right guard blows this. I was gonna say Hicks does a great job of just destroying. He stands him straight up. Watch the right guard right here. As soon as he gets hit, he's gonna stand straight up. His momentum doesn't go forward, dude. It's one damn yard, and now this game goes so differently, and no one ever talks about it. If he just stands this linebacker up, you don't even stand it up. Like we watched it, you 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 create a wedge. Right, he falls on the ground. See how he's going laterally. Boom. Go back. What we talk about, what the Eagles do so well, they're going forward. forward. Right, forward. You have to go forward. First of all, Kelsey or Kelly doesn't really move. He's kind of lunges forward. He doesn't really try and root someone out and keep his feet running. Right, and then you just see the guards going laterally here, which allows Hicks to keep all his forward mm. momentum going against him. Right, if you're going laterally and you have a guy running full speed, Hicks is a big backer. It's right, hard. he's gonna he's gonna at least stalemate you, and when you don't have Jalen Hurts who's squatting 500 pounds behind you, and they're not lined up in the pusher thing here, right? The pusher is coming from Hines is back there. I think that's Hines. Hines is back there trying to push from eight yards away. He has no chance. He has Why no is chance. he not closer? On this Go point. back real quick. When you look at this too, look at Ryan Kelly, and I love Ryan to death, but if you look at his left foot, it comes all the way off the ground and kind of misses, and that's why he kind of nose dives straight into the ground. See it right there. 
See how he's yeah. just kind of nose diving down there? That opens up that backside A gap for that guard. And like Jeremiah said, when you're going laterally and someone's coming vertically at you, it's hard to stop their momentum, especially when they're big, strong linebackers, especially on a play where you need one yard. And this comes down to like more effort than anything. Can we but- also talk about why we're running a quarterback sneak to the unbalanced away side? Like you have the left tackle, the left, the right tackle is lined up at left tight end, right? So you've got four O linemen on the left side here, and you're going to run it back, big brain, big brain. You're going to run it back towards the two tight end side where you have Ali Cox, who is a basketball player, blocking Dalvin Tomlinson, and then you're just going to be like, yeah, we can run behind those guys. Like mm. th- they should at least, and don't forget, you have the highest paid left guard in all of football over there. Let's not run behind him. Let's run over to the side where the tight ends are. Hey, their head coach just got there, okay? <laughs> Give him a minute. It's not like he's an O-lineman and should know at least fourth and one, okay? You, you guys keep laughing, yet this guy was an NFL head coach. I am almost sad to say that. I'm not even kidding you. So much love in your heart, Boone. Just so you know much how I feel, man. Heart. Don't yeah. waste wanna, my time. We should, we should get Jeff on the show. Is he doing so media I would now? Gladly, like what, cause he's, he's probably in a... I think he'd be a great guest on the O-line committee. I don't know if he's going to take the invitation now that you've just crapped all over him for the first time. Ah, the show's ruined forever. I know. We won't get Saturday All right. Vikings make the stop, and this is the first play after the stop. So remember, there's 231. That that play took three seconds, allegedly. Nice little uh, home-cooking clock clock operator there. You're not kidding. He could barely get a snap in that (laughs) amount of time. It was only three, Frank. (laughs) <laughs> Actually, let's add five seconds back on the clock. I think it was uh, – so fourth quarter, this is first down and 10. Vikings, oh, wow, momentum. We actually can maybe do this thing. Down by eight points, two and a half minutes left, and this is the next play after they stuff Matt Ryan here. First and of all, you, you, know, you know it's always taught. Every coach teaches it. You know, they're going to come out with some type of shot play off the rip, right? So the safeties are playing deep because they think, okay, deep shot. Right, that's what they're thinking. They're thinking deep shot. They're thinking the ability to like try and make it like deep middle again because they've taken a few of these. So you can watch like this is a great screenplay. But I love these safety. screens. The safety's twenty yards off the ball over the other side. Go to the wide copy again, real quick. Dude, these plays are so fun to watch. Like Missile. when you look at like you look at numbers, right? So you're thinking, okay, that guy is twenty yards off the ball. We have three receivers over here. There's really two guys covering three over here on the outside, right? That linebacker's kind of in no man's land because he has to play the middle but again this is why you spread guys out spread spread. them out no one's pressed except for up over jefferson so this is easy pitch and catch but this is really on the receivers getting on their guys and running their feet this play does not go without these two receivers over here i believe that's thielen and osborne yeah over here they get a great job about coming out here and blocking these two guys and just staying in their way look at he's clutch this is this is called a missile screen and we talked about this on our show derisaw getting out here Watch, out, watch how amazing and athletic he looks. Number one. I mean, the kid is primed to be the next top left tackle in this league. He is so smooth. I love it. And then they continue. Some love here too. He He's does, but look it. down here. Like, remember as, we as made fun moving. of him? He kind of yeah, gets in the way. The, tur- he, the turf monster finds him. Yeah. He, <laughs> but he, he also gets in the way of the run. Like I was, And I'm all about it. Like I love the fact that he's running downfield, sell these. And this is how these plays get made. When you get out and run and you just start hitting people and you continue running. But like right now, oh, uh, turf monster, look out! Oh no, I didn't oh, see him no. coming. Oh, but, then, but, then, but, but I think he gets up and helps usher. Doesn't he get up? Look at that. Yep. <laughs> Go back. Still. I want to. I want to. I want to. I mean, we call it some missile screen, but let's talk about the rules of what a missile screen is, right? So there's oh, there's so there's multiple screens out here that you can run out of a three receiver set, right? The missile screen. You have, again, the two inside receivers are going to push and crack to the outside, right? So they're responsible for number one and number two, right? So these two guys guys are are responsible for number one and number two. Maggie, you can draw one and two over those guys. The rule for the left tackle is you check number number two's block first, right? You see Darisaw. The rule is to like, hey, we we trust these guys. We trust these receivers out here, but we trust them about as far as we can throw them, Mm -hmm. right? So we want to make sure you sure up. So you see Darisaw's eyes immediately go out here to check on number two. Once number two is blocked, he now needs to go to number three, which is now the safety. Ezra Cleveland's job, the left guard, you set for 1,001 and you go and you are looking for this inside backer, (laughs) this inside backer over here. And then the center needs to get out and we call it a rat kill. The center needs to come out and look and see if there's any D-line or anything chasing. And then everyone else just run and try and pick someone off on the backside, right? 1,001, he's out. 
Derisaw checks one. He checks two. He immediately gets up on number three, and now Ezra Cleveland's extra because, again, everyone's in pass rush mode here. No one's really thinking screen. They're thinking deep shot. So none of those D linemen really had a chance to turn around and get after the ball. And so this this dude, we're, you're looking out here yes. at the safety 20 yards off the line of scrimmage. That's kind of the final block to spring this, yes. this play, right? And yep. that's why the, this corner over here, over Dalvin originally, is he's always one. The closest to the sideline is one. The next in the slot is two. The linebacker would be three, right? And so everybody has a number system. Thielen goes to one. KJ goes to two. The left tackle checks two and goes to three. And then from there, at him and Ezra should move to the safety, which they end up doing. Here's and the, the center just does has, has a nasty slap. Ooh, got him down. Slaps himself too. I love it. Who cares? You, <laughs> you cut on the backside of the tackle. You just don't want anyone to get there. And then uh, Eddie Ingram's just got to man this guy easy. And then he's laid out if he gets out at all. Oh, backside of a missile is the best because you don't really have to do much. And then Dalvin you know what? And for all the talk about really Dalvin fast. Cook's future, you watch plays like that. There was a ha small handful of plays, not the same Dalvin Effort, he dude. used to be, but man, you watch Effort. plays like this and you're like, someone's gonna get. A nice, maybe not elite running back anymore, but someone's going to get a nice player with uh, top, with Dalvin he's top, Cook. He's the top third running back in the NFL. Third. Yeah, when he's even, on, he's on. Let's be honest. That dude could take anybody on. In an A-gap, I would put my money on him if he's pissed off over anyone. So now we need a little two-point oh, conversion. Oh, really? Who are you thinking? Who, who's on your mind there, Serrells? Derrick Henry, Ooh. maybe. I don't know. In the a -gap, How about this? Fred off Warner. Is, all right, Fred Warner, Dalvin Cook. Meet in the A-gap. You tell me. What's the down and distance? Fourth and one. Fred Warner. You are crazy. Fred Warner. I love Fred Warner to death, but Dalvin Cook is a monster when he's pissed off. Bobby um, Wagner. Bobby Wagner. Oh, he would crush Bobby. Oh, my gosh. You are just drinking All right. I'm purple Kool-Aid. I can't you wait. I cannot. I'm just a huge purple grape Kool-Aid Because right for a now. long time, I was like, where is he? And then one game, I saw him show up because people were like kind of talking about him. And he, I was like, okay, he's back. He's just, he just And, then, and then where'd he go? Oh, I'm sorry. They threw the ball 55 times the next game. And then Amazing. the next game, they threw Fugazi. it 60 times. It doesn't exist. You guys just came up with a great historical game, too. Pick your linebacker historically. Pick your running back or your fullback historically. They meet oh. the A-gap. Who do you got? Are you kidding? This could be this could I get mean, fun. You could go crazy Mackie, with Mackie, that's your homework backs. assignment for next week. I want you to come up with five matchups of all-time running backs, all-time middle linebackers. And, we'll, and I want at least two we'll fullbacks. We'll argue it out. We'll argue at least it out. two fullbacks. Mike, Mike, all Mike Allstott meets... Oh. John Lynch. Whoa. Oh, oh, Derek Brooks. Oh, oh, come get some. Football porn in the A gap. Steve Atwater. I'm getting Steve hot Atwater. again, boys. Oh, I'm turning red. <laughs> all right. So now you've scored this touchdown. You've, you've stopped. This is all within like two minutes of real time, right? You stop the Colts on a quarterback sneak. You get the ball back. You torpedo down for, or I guess missile down, uh, nice. right? Good for for a touchdown, and now now you have to convert the two point conversion, or this might not matter because you're still down by two points here. So two fifteen left. Pre snap two point motion. conversion. Here we go. Pre snap motion. Right. You go all the way back, all the way back to the beginning. You pre snap motion. You find out are they in manner zone? Right. You here bring it all the way across. Let's see. No one follows him. So then, oh. boom! Immediately, Kirk Cousin knows it's zone. Zone. Right? Zone. So you think, okay, maybe zone pressure, but you don't really see anything coming. And then you just, you, you're going to pick your matchup, right? At this point, you're going to pick your matchup and go, okay, who do I trust and who am I going to find a way to get the ball? Protection's great. And the he Hawk. knows that over here on the backside, Hawks got basically that linebacker has to go back to go back if he can. He's a mismatch, let's be honest. Right? You know, Hawks going to come out here. You know, you know, he's going to take a lot of attention on the outside there, right? There's three guys over him. Jefferson over the Vikings logo over there. Three. Watch. Count it. Look at this. One, yeah, right here. two, three. <laughs> They're yeah. all going, where's 18? Which leaves the mismatch. Hawkinson just can stick this guy inside, just be a better athlete than him. And Kirk Cousins throws it to the goalpost. Done. Which is like Jeremiah said, tight ends are such threats down here nowadays. Like That's what tight ends are really being utilized for. How can we use you in the red zone? And when you leave him one-on-one -on -one versus a linebacker, he's going to be a mismatch all day. Look at that. That What's little, he doing there? Okay, yeah, so he's, he's leaning into him with the out move there. Right, and yeah, that's right kind of right where he's out. feeling. Like when he's right feeling here, this guy's thinking, okay, he's breaking to the corner, right? Because he's got his arms draped all over him. So right here, he leans into him. He's pressuring and thinking, okay, I'm trying to move to get around you. This guy immediately jumps outside thinking he'll jump it because he thinks 44 has his inside. 44 gets sucked up with Madison running to the corner here. 
and then boom, right there. You see, he sees Madison, so he thinks, okay, I got to get out to the flat, cover him. Kirk does a great job looking this off, right? Looks over there, first read, immediately comes back to Hawk. Nice arm angle there, too. Right? Look at that nice, clean pocket. Oh, damn, leaving those tackles on an island. So, all right, psychologically now, let's go back to the just sort of the, the mindset side of this. The, the last two or three minutes of real time, as a player, you were down 33 nothing at halftime. You start to chunk away. I remember so on the on the media side, we actually made Judd Zolgad leave the game at halftime. I so remember. We could, we could start our post-game show at halftime. And it was you know, people were just venting for an hour, hour and a half, and we're watching this play out. And so I don't think we, just as spectators, once the Vikings got to within, was it six, 14 points or whatever it was, down by two touchdowns, it was 15 points, whatever it was, that's when we started thinking, oh, okay, this is a thing now. As a player, when does it become a thing? Is it the Matt Ryan stop? Like, wh when do you think we can actually win this game? When you're ahead. <laughs> you're not, I mean, you were down 30, 33 points. You're not, you're not like one touchdown away. Guys, we're so close. You're like, no, we're not even close. We have to continue going until it's in yeah. the bag. And so the minute Hawk catches this, we're starting to think, okay, now it's a real You chance. also black out a little bit. Yeah. You, you, you kind of black out. I was on, I, I was on the Chargers when we had the – Second half. I think we were at one point we're the biggest charger comeback in history against the old 49ers on Christmas Eve. Sorry, Booney. Wow. But, you know, for us, like, you kind of just black out. Like, you kind of just have to just continually, like, not even think about situation, not even think about You just have to go out there and be like, we just have to execute on every play because every play can be the difference, good or bad, right? And at that point, you don't really have a ton of pressure on you as an offense, right? Like, you, the defense at that point, when you get a little momentum, like you said, you get to that point where you're, you were up 33 – and now you're down for it and you're only uh, up 14 now. Like the pressure is fully shifted onto you. And as an offense, you're playing very free, right? You're playing very free. You're in a rhythm. You're feeling good. But you just have to kind of black all the noise out and just black out and just do your job individually. And we have 11 guys doing that. That's when it's really, really hard to stop. Yeah. It's a good point, so, especially because like that's when you want to knock the score out of your mind. Like you're just like, hey, we're just kind of up here. The five of us are playing ball. We're just going to take care of problems and we'll worry about everything later. And so, Meanwhile, the game is now tied. Implosion on the other side. Implosion. But, 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 but that's the thing, too. And maybe you can take me inside on the other side of this because the game is not over for the Colts either. Like, so now there's it's fourth quarter. Slowest moving clock ever. Now it's two, two minutes, 11 <laughs> seconds left. Somehow. Right? <laughs> so, 2-11, fourth quarter. It's a tie game. You got a former MVP at quarterback who's not the same guy as he was five years former. ago. Former. You scored 33 points in the first half. You can still go down and kick a game-winning field goal here if you're the Colts, but let's let's start no. the drive off well, boys. Let's get a chunk play on the first play, right, ideally. Before I hit the play here, which was not a chunk play for the Colts, um, if you're the Colts, like, what are you saying on the sideline? Holy crap, we just blew a 33-point lead, but we can still win, right? No, you're thinking the, this the game thing you're saying lost. is are, are you, no, you done? no, 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 no. <laughs> Alex, if you like, if I'm you just watched a team already. score 36 <laughs> points on you and a half and like tie it up, you'd be like, <sighs> in, reality, right. oh, in reality, you're kind of playing for <laughs> overtime at this point. Like in reality, as an offense, you've gone out there, you've kind of pooped the bed a little bit in the second half. You're like, listen, let's just not do anything disastrous, right? Let's not just turn the ball over. Let's not like find a way to give them the ball back, like. Let's just see if we can get a chunk play or if we can just get positive play in first down and then maybe make something happen. But we just can't come out here and just absolutely do something disastrous. Well, I don't know if this is disastrous, but here's what happens on the it's first play. Good. It's not <laughs> the best. Whoops. Boop. They forget that you have to block the middle linebacker when he blitzes. See, that's what I'm saying. Like, guys are so checked out Panicked. right now. You've Panicked. given up 36 points unanswered. Like, they're just like, guys, are we – this Go back. is this on, is the, is running on back. the running back. Number Jinx. 21 blows this. You can see it right away. They're doing a cross key. We've talked about this a little bit. Break tendencies. Yep. Good old boy, Mackey. Yep. So 58. 58 to your point here is this offensive line. You're sliding to 58, right? And that it just tells the running back immediately you have 54. Now, I don't know what 21's looking at because, I mean, Kendricks doesn't delay blitz this. He doesn't do anything. At the snap of the ball, he is And Hines rolling. is looking at him. Look. Right, he's rolling. Hines looks at him, and he just Does he forgets. Miss? Is he... He, I, 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 this is this is pure panic, chaos. You know what I wonder? All everything right. going here, and he just gets he just gets himself like you work yourself up, and like I can't make a mistake, I can't make a mistake, I can't make a mistake, 
and you worry about playing not to lose instead of playing to win. And that's where mistakes like this happen in critical situations in oh, the game. Why is he Go back so This is Daniel no, 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 Hunter no, no. over look, here. If you look, I wonder if he sees Ryan. Because, look, 58, normally your declaration should stay to your side of the ball. So Ryan should stay to the right. But see how 58 crosses the ball? So Ryan looks like he starts to go back. Go ahead, keep playing it. Right there. I wonder if, see, Hines kind of turns back the other way when he sees Ryan go that way. And I wonder if he's like, hey, Ryan's got him. You know, because sometimes that happens. So they're going to see things. They're going to yeah, slide. Yeah, like we're going to fall into this. And it could have been, at the same time, it could have been a lot of what Jeremiah said. You are super tight right now. And you're like, can't make a mistake. And then all of a sudden, the biggest mistake happens. And you're like, how did that happen? And I, I guarantee you, the coaching point on the sideline, too, was like, hey, Hines, listen, if your guy doesn't come, get out there and chip to Neil Hunter. Yes. Right. Like, hey, yeah. and so you're thinking, you're thinking, right? You're thinking too much. Instead of just trusting your rules and doing what you're supposed to do, you're thinking, okay, oh, he didn't come right away. Let me get my eyes to 99. Right. right? And so when you're thinking too much, you just sometimes it ha it happens. Even to professionals, it happens. I mean, you can tell Quentin Nelson is not involved in like thinking at all. He has 54. No. Quentin Nelson is fully like I'm one on one with 97. My center's sliding away from me, and this is just a total ma missed assignment in a crucial situation, and that's how you lose football games. Yeah, and they did get the ball back. So the Vikings actually won the toss in overtime, did not get into scoring range. and So the Colts had another shot in overtime, but it kind of felt like both watching the game live and then watching the film back for you guys, it's like this was kind of their chance. All right, do you have another bullet in your chamber here if you're the Colts? And to get sacked like this on the first play just felt like, well, <laughs> yes, <laughs> unless they pick up a fumble or something, it's fire probably, blanks, just fire yes. blanks. <laughs> So and then this is um, so now this is this is overtime and the Vikings, they whiff their first possession Colts whiff and now the Vikings have the ball. So now we're by the way, 48 seconds left in overtime. So the likely outcome at this point is a tie, which if you're the Vikings, like, God, we, is it the greatest comeback? If you come back and tie, probably not. So they could have they could have played for a tie here, too. But once you get this far. No, you got to try you go and go for the kill. You're going. You go for the kill. So first and 10 here, Vikings at their own 38, 39 yard the line. One and they seed need in the something. NFC was still in play at this point, right? Correct. Yes. Yeah, so you have to go for the kill. There's no plan for a tie. When you're trying to talk about home field advantage, before we get to this play, can we just talk about how none of these plays we've shown about the Vikings, there's been zero pressure by the Indianapolis Colts. Told you, man. They sent four, right? They sent four, which goes back to my the very first play you showed us in third quarter, like, they decided we're just going to sit back and let these guys do their thing. We're not going to try and get after them and fluster Kirk Cousins, even with a backup center in. Right? Like, that's not Garrett Bradbury. It's not your starting center. They never pressured him, and that is one of the biggest reasons I think they lost this game is they refused to try and take chances and take risks and get at Kirk Cousins' feet. Yeah. Well, and it's funny because I mean, the, Vikings, the Vikings gave up a lot of – I mean, and I, I know you guys aren't the biggest you know, PFF guys, but – uh, between the two guards, the Vikings had the Vikings gave up the most interior pressures of basically any team in the NFL. So, and if you, they're going to live in empty, if you're going to live in empty, send five. He's got to get the ball out of his hands. Right, you make like him you, force faster decisions. We talk about you. You spread them out like they love to spread teams out. The Vikings do it, but like you send five, they have to throw hot. You can't throw hot fifty yards down the field. It's little <clears> six, seven yard out routes. Yeah. I think the problem uh, the problem becomes when you have 18 on your side. People are like a hot route could be very disastrous for us if, if we you go. miss a tackle. Yeah, if Correct. you miss a tackle, if you miss a tackle, mm. it's over. Correct. If you send five, but at the same time, like at this point, you haven't got to him. You Look haven't been able to get to him with th with four. Like, you Look gotta at that. change it up. But That's you're the at most point vanilla you... rush I've ever seen. If you're trying to like win the game, you're trying to send people. You're moving everybody everywhere because you want this quarterback off his spot. And when you let him just sit back there and pat the ball and get it rid of it without being touched, that's how they get into a rhythm. And that, and like Jeremiah said, that was their biggest downfall was that they played too safe. And they went out there and they were like, well, let these guys beat us themselves. Okay, well, they just did. Now you look even more foolish. First of all, I think 72 jumps off sides here. But it was a great, great jump by Ezra Cleveland here. Watch him. <laughs> yeah. I'll go slow-mo here so you can see. Yeah. Slightly off -sides. Oh, that's definitely a that's I don't know. A if it's Lane Johnson, it's not. So I guess he can get away with it, too. I mean, he's moving right there. Yeah. I mean, I would jump a little bit, too, if I had to force Buckner sitting across from me. Oh, dude is so long. We drafted him. But, I mean, yeah. Great route concept, puts it exactly where he needs to, even kind of triple coverage-ish. But you go to your playmaker, I think that's Thielen. It yep. is. Yeah, I mean, you, you go to your trusted guy you've played with a long time. 
puts the ball just outside. I mean, you got Osborne taking the middle linebacker across his face again. He's got a break inside across this guy's face. If he goes behind him, he allows to keep his eyes in the backfield, right? As soon as Osborne comes here, you see he opens his hip. 44 has to open his hips and run with Osborne. Which opens creates up that big just lane. Just enough lane. Just enough lane for Kirk Cousins to fit that ball in there. Yeah. Amazing. And so this was, yeah, this got the Vikings right basically to the edge of field goal range. They did hit a little bubble screen to Jefferson to get an extra few yards. And then they kicked the game winning 40 yard field goal. Greg, and that was a wrap, Greg man. Joseph, the leg, baby. Greg, the leg. The leg. So what are the main what are the main lessons to be learned here if you're uh, if you're holding a 33 nothing lead or if you're trailing 33 nothing at halftime pressure you need pressure if they're going to throw a 2 minute at you you need to make them scared you can't just let them sit back there and be like oh no not him not him not him you need to have a quarterback that's freaking out he's already freaking out they're down 33 points if you get him to run a little bit more he's going to implode and then he's just going to throw you the ball constantly Especially the, when it's not a mobile quarterback, right? Right. If you're playing, if you're playing Patrick Mahomes Lamar Jackson, or Lamar yeah. Jackson, or those guys that can you're gain gain or ten or fifteen, that's when you can really only rush four, stay in your rush lanes, and you want to keep them in the pocket. When you have a true pocket passer, I mean, no one's afraid of Kirk Cousins' legs. No one, Mackie, you could chase Kirk Cousins out. I mean, in reality, <laughs> you you I mean, want to get a him high level, high, you see high me on the level Peloton, athlete. by the way. I'll high take level anyone. athlete. High level. That's you don't want those problems. <laughs> you don't want those problems on the Peloton. You don't, you don't want I'm these telling you, Mac. You, you, you don't want Mac, those You don't. No, okay. Mac. No, Mac. Don't. I've seen numbers on a 30 minute Peloton ride that I was like, that's almost like you've been cheating, buddy. You've been you cheating. You don't want to see me on the Peloton. Dude, we did it together. Peloton. I'll follow you. What's your What's your top What's your top What's your top 30 minute score? Uh, th- uh, for output, 375? 741. 741. What? I'm telling you, dude, it's not possible. 30-minute ride? What are you? You're welcome. You're welcome. What do you have? Are you have robo legs? Dude, our legs are the strongest thing on our body. Just hammering home. <laughs> they used baby. to lift people up constantly. <laughs> What's amazing is I feel pretty good because I'm like in the top, you know, 5 to 10 percentile. When I'm, I'm rocking, not, if rolling. I'm not in the top 150, I get real pissed off. Dude, I got like 600 one time. I was like, Cyrus, I'm so close. He's like, dude, I just got like 715. I was, like, ah, I'm so far away again. <laughs> J Cyril 71 I, for all you Peloton enthusiasts out there. I'll take all challengers. Oh, J Cyril 71. Get a real uh, bike and get on the Mackie. road. Never. Booney, what's your? Are you going to put your Peloton out there? No, publicly? I don't do Peloton. I'm on the road. You see me chasing cars on the street. Oh. Okay, yeah. Like he's on dog. he's on the freeway. He's he's just Oh, I go everywhere. <laughs> I don't give the, the carpool anyway, the carpool in. <laughs> back to football. Um yeah, pressure, don't get scared, and then on the Viking side, just perfect perfect execution. Right. Yep. They yep. found ways to execute, they found ways to win their one on ones, and then the defense really has to get a lot of praise here of being able to make adjustments. And I think if you look at what the Vikings did on defense, they got after Matt Ryan. Right? They got after Matt Ryan and also they did a great job on first and second down. They didn't allow them to live in third and fours, third and threes. They were living in third and longs the entire second half of that game. I saw a crazy stat today. Someone put out like the the point differentials through the first three quarters of every team in the NFL. So are you getting outscored through the first three quarters? Or are you da- so it's the best teams in the NFL, the Bills, the Niners, the Chiefs. They're all outscoring te- the Bengals. They have like a plus 100 or plus 150 point differential through three quarters. The Vikings last season... Were a minus eighty nine through three quarters, which was third worst ahead of only the Bears and the Cardinals, but they were the best fourth quarter point differential in the NFL because of games. This was a huge reason why. Yes, I mean you win but, games in the fourth quarter. I mean you do, but you might want to be time. a little a little less obnoxious about it if you're the Vikings. Maybe be a little, a little better bit. in the second quarter next year. Just, but, just uh, slightly, just slightly. So there it is. Would you say we use the word greatest? This is the biggest comeback in NFL history, but I still think doing it in the playoffs, if you're Frank Wright. By the way, Frank Wright gets fired. Frank Wright, the architect of the Bills' comeback against the Oilers from 1991 that had this record for thir- for three decades. Some uh, symbolism there. I really don't think, this record gets, I don't think this record gets broken again. Not in no. today's age of NFL. This really? that was. I, I think that was a, a that was the perfect storm game. There was yeah. a perfect storm of like with a coach, head coach has no idea what's going. Because I'm telling you right now, any head coach would go into that second half like we're up 33. 
We're going to send six every damn time, and I'm going to see how fast they want to play this game. Like, you're – you're not going to sit back and go, all right, now hit us with your all-star receivers. Let's do this. And we're just going to rush four up these simple lanes and make it super simple for everybody. Like, that's not what people are thinking. Most coaches going at halftime, if you're up that big, like, we're going to put our foot on the gas on even the harder gas. now. Yeah. That's all you ever hear. Foot on the gas, boys. You're like, let's try and get 60. We're not like, all right, we're good. No more points. We're good. <laughs> try not to lose. Never have I ever heard a coach say, I mean, they are like, I want blood. You're like, oh, God, we're killing these guys. Jesus. Yeah. More. Well, and that's more. And that's how you more. That's how you wind up not getting the interim tag. Uh, old, tag Kylo, Kylo Ren gift. More. More. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are pussies. Ah, we had to beat them way more than this in my day. <laughs> Thanks, coach. Oh, my God. By the way, click the subscribe button and the like button so we can spread the word about this offensive line lifestyle podcast.